Hello and welcome to the chaos. I'm Fetch, and today I'm going to be interviewing Tremnek, talking about a little bit of their player history, as well as the choice behind Tatiova and the, the deck breakdown. Hello, thanks for having me. I'm, uh, my name is Ignazi, but I'm known as Tremnek online, uh, and I'm from Spain, Barcelona. And yeah, uh, I've been playing CDH for, I would say, a bit less than four years, so three years and something. Yeah. I mean, you're a player that I'm pretty sure a lot of people recognize the name of. You've been in a lot of top 16s. I think you've won a few tournaments as well. So why don't, why don't you go through a little bit of your history as a player? Yeah, so I started playing uh, tournaments maybe like two years ago, something like that. Uh, so yeah, I've, been, I've done a lot of top 16s, uh, finals, well, top fours. Um, yeah, last year I won two Chaos events, like the Chaos Tournament 4 and Chaos Tournament 5. I was playing Blue Farm at, the, at those events. Yeah, usually my main deck is, is Blue Farm. I've been playing it for more than three years, I would say. And yeah, it's the deck that I consider is the, the best one and like, like has the most resources to be able to, to deal with any situation. So even though like on my regular day-to-day -day when I play CDH, I play a lot of different decks. I have uh, f like built on physical more than 20 CDH decks. So I play everything. But when it comes to tournaments, I'm a very competitive person and I like to win and I like to bring the deck that I think has the most chances to win. That's why mainly I was, I've been playing Blue Farm on tournaments, even though I have a lot of decks that I think that would uh, perform good. But yeah, this time I decided to bring Tatiova since it's been a, a deck that I have a lot of fun up with. Um, yeah, it worked out. Yeah, so what what is your reasoning behind swapping off that blue farm and bringing this Tatiova to us? Uh, well, basically I wanted to give uh, Tatiova a fair chance at a tournament. And since Chaos is uh, 90 minute rounds, uh, I thought that was the ideal tournament to play it in. So basically, when Tatiova became way stronger when, when Nisa was printed. I mean, before that, it was still a, a good deck, but Nisa gave it a, a, a huge boost. Nisa, uh, with the combos that it brings with a Shion Kirion, uh, that was the like something that boosted the deck to a, a new level. And before the Bowmasters were released, uh, I was having a lot of success with Tatiova. Like, I had... I did... Uh, like after Nisa was released and before Bowmaster were were released, so there was like maybe a month and a half period, something like that, uh, and I had like a sixty percent win rate over over like uh, I don't know maybe fifty or more games with Tatiova. Jeez. So, wow. yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was that, that's pretty performing impressive. very well. Like it had the yeah, it has the key stacks pieces to to disrupt the most commonly placed decks and is able to play around those stack pieces and also it has a lot of interaction and yeah it's a, it has a, like when the engine starts going it's very hard to stop but yeah then bowmasters got printed so uh, it was a bit uh, like bowmasters is, is punishing the deck a lot because every land you play you draw a card but you also get uh, bowmasters ping you your tatiova or if you have an azusa for instance you cannot play your three lands because you also will die. Um, but yeah, after that, I did some changes. I added rapid hybridization and March of Swirling Mist to be able to deal with Bowmasters. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's a card that does really hurt the deck, but you did a great job of playing around it, so well done. Yeah, and the tournament, uh, I, I faced uh, like a lot of Bowmasters. I think like out of the five Swiss plus top 16 and final seven games at, at least on five of them there were bowmasters on the on the table so Jeez. yeah having uh the, this amount of removal worked out well well and it, it worked out really well for you you went undefeated yeah correct me if i'm wrong here but it seems like time is very much a limiter for tatiova because extra turns is one of your major game plans and because you're not a deck that really does turbo you have a major value engine and some win conditions that are 
combos, but not going to be going off on turn two or three. Feels like the time limit is very much a factor for this deck. Yes, exactly. I, I totally agree on that. Uh, I think under 75 minutes tournaments, it would be a bit too short, especially because when the time, uh, like when the time is called, even if you are playing, you can if, even if you combo with uh, extra turns, uh, it is not accepted as a combo. So I mean, you, you can in the last turn you cannot present an, an infinite combo uh, loop uh, and get a win because uh, you don't have any more turns. It's a bit unfair, I guess, but at the same time I understand it. But yeah, it's like nerfing the the, the infinite turn uh, combos. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's one of the reasons that I put fi- Finale of Devastation on the deck also, because uh, I needed a way to be able to close the game on the last turn. So after drawing the deck and having mana and whatever, you can just Finale of Devastation with uh, all your creatures and zombies, whatever, and kill the table. But yeah, uh, you really need... Uh, like Because the deck, if, if you try to go too fast with the deck, instead of like controlling the table, uh, stacking it out, then... Uh, like just one piece of interaction that they casted you at the at the at the right timing then it will destroy you so you really need to know when to go for it know when to play for the long game and yeah time limit is an issue like if you're playing the deck perfectly it means that you don't go fast and that's when the time limit is uh, the issue hmm. when you're talking about playing the deck well and going through and playing that control game plan, uh, I w- would you be able to break down some of the, the key cards and some of the, some of the game plan for Tatsuyova? You mentioned Nissa earlier as a huge piece. Yes, so basically you don't really want like a fast Tatsuyova. There was a game that I had, uh, I think it was in the semifinals. I ha- or, or, uh, or round five, I don't remember, but I, I had an opening hand that was land, jewel lotus, mox diamond, land, uh, and something else. Basically, it was at Tatiova turn one with uh, land on turn two to draw with Tatiova, but it didn't have anything else. So I mulliganed that hand because if you keep that hand and your Tatiova is killed, you are totally out of the game. And if you do a turn one Tatiova, like anyone will red blast it or even just chain of vapor or whatever and bounce it and you're fucked. And also, if you don't have anything else in your hand, but like Tatiova and only one land drop, and not not even a fetch or anything, like, well, if, even if it was a fetch, just having Tatiova and having few mana and nothing else, it's, it's not that good. I mean, you want to have Tatiova plus uh, one of the engines of the deck that like uh, extra land drops or things like that. So for instance, uh, like Azusa, uh, Azusa, yeah, Azusa extra land drops, that's amazing. Uh, like uh, Nisa that you mentioned, it also gets you the combo pretty fast. Or if it's not the combo, it gets you Oracle of Moldaya, which is also amazing. Like Oracle of Moldaya is the, is the best card in the deck, hands down. Like there's people saying that, why don't you cut it to have the Nisa combo more, more streamlined, right? Into having two hits instead of three. But Oracle of Moldaya carries you in so many games that it's it's worth having it on the deck to and, and having the Nisa combo not be as fast because it's it's a card that allows you it gives you extra resources that you don't have, which is being able to play lands from the top of the deck. So you don't need to have your lands on your hand. And it also gives you an extra land drop, which is amazing. You, you can uh, ramp a lot and draw a lot of cards with that. You don't want to rush Tatiova too much. It's better to play Tatiova once you already have something else on the on the board, some some of the Tatiova engines on the board. Yeah, in in the podcast, most recent podcast, we were talking about the deck, and one of the one of the people on the podcast said that Tatiova almost feels like a Niv Mizzet light, uh, being a very heavy draw engine in the command zone and a very controlly deck. But it, it seems like, unlike Niv Mizzet, you are much less focused on your commander getting out early and impacting and shaping the board and more on setting up your own game plan and then being able to safely play your Tatiova. 
Yeah, exactly. I, I listened to your podcast and I it was a, an interesting comparison. Like on some point, it's like it's you could say it's similar in the sense that you play a lot of interaction and you want to protect your commander. But yeah, I think you don't want to rush her too much. De well, depending on your hand, I mean, if you can do Tatiova turn one, Azusa turn two with lands, whatever, of course you do that. But once people know you, like they they will try to kill Tatiova fast and if you don't have a way to protect her or uh, a way to generate a lot of value with her you will you'll you will fall behind a lot absolutely when we were talking about how you have some combos and the ashaya quarion combo is one of the the main ones what are can you a breakdown of the combos for tatiova how you win the game really so basically well i'll there's a, I wrote a small primer. If you go to the, my original deck list, there's a small primer, which is basically a list of the combos for people that wants to know. But basically, there's like different type of loops. There's, first of all, there's the, the ghostly flicker loops. Well, basically, okay, first of all, Mystic Shunter is one of the key cards of the deck that is involved in many of the combos, except the, the, the Ashaya Kyrion. But ghostly flicker, I sorry, Mystic Sanctuary is, the key card that allows you to either record extra turns or record ghostly flicker. So basically, uh, let's start with the ghostly flicker loops. Uh, ghostly flicker is a card that you, you pay two colorless and a blue, and it lets you uh, exile two permanents and then return them to the battlefield. To pull, it's uh, I think it's creature, artifact, or enchantment, and then or land, and return them to the battlefield. So basically, if you have three islands plus Mystic Sanctuary. So basically, if Mystic Sanctuary enters untapped, you can cast uh, Ghostly Flicker on Mystic Sanctuary and uh, another land, and then you can order the triggers. So Mystic Sanctuary puts Ghostly Flicker back on top of your deck, and Tatioba draws you the Ghostly Flicker again. So if that other land is, for instance, an Ancient Tomb or a Gaius Cradle that generates more than one mana, you're already paying the blue for Mystic Sanctuary plus two from Ancient Tomb, for instance, three mana. This is the Ghostly Flicker mana. But you are drawing two cards. So basically, you are you're drawing Ghostly Flicker and one more. So you can draw your deck doing that. And if you have, like, if, if Gaia's Cradle gives you uh, more than two mana, that's already netting one green every time. Or if you have, like, a Lotus Cobra or Anissa, you're also netting mana of any color. Uh, another way to use the Ghostly Flicker is with, uh, the, with a Mana Vault and the Mystic Sanctuary. You will only draw ghostly flicker, so you don't draw anything, but you you generate one colorless extra mana every time. So then you can filter, like you can make infinite colorless, and then you can filter that with the lands to make infinite of all colors and, and draw your deck. And then, well, yeah, while you're doing this, if you have also Field of the Dead or whatever on the field, you, you will also make uh, infinite zombies, or yeah, there's a lot of ways to get value. Then, uh, there's uh, also another route with Mystic Sanctuary that involves uh, looping turns instead of looping Ghostly Flicker. You can use it to loop turns, for instance, with trade routes. If you have trade routes, Mystic Sanctuary, and an, ex an extra turn, you can pay one colorless mana with trade routes to bounce your Mystic Sanctuary back to the hand. Uh, you replay it, and uh, you, uh, you put one extra turn that you had on the graveyard, well, assuming that you had one or that you have played one and you are on your next turn, so now it's on the graveyard. You put it back on the top and you draw it with Tatiova. And that's infinite turns. Yeah, you can also do the same thing instead of bouncing with trade routes. You could, if you have, for instance, a Ramon Up Excavator or a Crucible of Worlds, you could uh, sacrifice Mystic Sanctuary, for instance, with Sylvan Safekeeper to put it in the graveyard and then replay it. Or you can also strip mine it, like with your own strip mine, you can strip mine the Mystic Sanctuary and replay it to get the access to the extra turn. Then also, if you have Kirion Ranger, that returns a forest to hand. And if you have Yabimaya, Cradle of Growth, that makes all your lands forests. That's another way of, of returning your Mystic Sanctuary to hand, because now it's a forest. So with Kirion Ranger, you can return it, and you replay it, and uh, you get another turn. Actually, in the semifinals, I did uh, I used this interaction, not with Mystic Sanctuary, but with Kirion Ranger and, and Yabimaya. I returned to my hand the... Seagate uh, Reborn, the land that is on the other side, Seagate Restoration. And I played it as Seagate Restoration, and I drew seven cards, I think. I had at that point like 
20 something mana but I didn't have anything to do but bouncing back the land and replaying it as a sorcery to draw cards gave me the 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 cards that I needed to go for the win. Another combo is with Wall of the Aeons. Uh, so Wall of the Aeons has a buyback price of sacrificing three islands. And if you have three land drops, which you achieve, for instance, just by having Azusa, so it's the normal land drop plus two more. And if you're able to play lands from Graveyard with Ramunap or Crucible of Worlds, so you can sacrifice three islands, play Wall of the Aeons with buyback, and you can replay your three islands from the Graveyard to be able to do the same next turn and have infinite turns. And then the, there's the combos with, uh, well, the combo with a Shy and Kirion Ranger. That this one is is fairly simple. I mean, you, you have a Shy, you, you play Kirion Ranger. It's a forest, so you can return itself to hand to untap, for instance, Tatioba. That would give you a green mana because it's a forest, so it can tap for mana. And then you replay Kirion Ranger again. This, without anything else, just Kirion, uh, Ashaya, and Tatioba. Just that draws you your deck. But if you also have Nisa or Lotus Cobra, every time you replay the Kirion, that's also a, a, a trigger for, the, for those two, and it also gives you infinite mana. Makes a lot of sense. There, there's a whole lot of ways that you can really win off this, off of much of anything. Yeah, sorry. There's a lot of combos, basically. Like You don't need to focus on a particular one, or if there's one of your combos that gets uh, disrupted. As long as you keep, if you have a good engine that you're able to draw a couple of cards each turn, you can pivot between different uh, combo lines to go for the most optimal one, or the one that is not going to get interrupted, or the one that goes around the stacks on the table. Any other tips you have for people wanting to pick up the deck? I would say it's a hard deck to pilot, because you need to not only know how to, how to play the deck, but also you need to read the game and you need to know when to go for it or know when you need to stack more. Like for instance, if you have uh, if you have a green sun genius, for instance, and you have uh, you can do it for X3, let's say. It's not always the best option to do, like go for an Azusa or for an Isa or whatever. Like many games, seeing the game and, and anything, you, you need to play it slow, let's say, not try to rush it, and maybe you need to green some zenith for a collector roof, because the otherwise you're going to lose the game if you try to raise other decks. So basically you need to know, like, you need to be able to analyze the state of the game and uh, be able to make the correct decisions on when to play safer or when to develop your engines and, yeah, and when to play the commander. So it's it gets with... You need some practice to, to get used to to not messing up the timings. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom with everyone. Are there any shout outs or any last things you want to say? If anyone is interested, I I do coaching. So like if anyone wants that, I mean, mainly the, like the, the people I've been coaching were like Spanish people because they know me and they just ask for advice and, and then we do a coaching session. But like, I'm happy to coach anyone about not only Tatiova, but like anything. I mean, I think I have a lot of knowledge on the format and uh, different decks. So if anyone is interested in coaching, just uh, write to me in Discord. Yeah, and we'll have links and info in the in the description. So if you want to take a look at this deck list, or if you want to see their Discord, that that will be in the description for you to look at. So. Thank you so much for coming on. I uh, thank you everyone for watching. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah. And a special thank you to our patrons. We really could not do all this without you guys.